Let's now see the brachial plexus and discuss the injuries and the result of injuries to the structures of the brachial plexus. And we're going to start by the medial winging of the scapula. The medial winging of the scapula occurs due to injury of the long thoracic nerve. The long thoracic nerve comes from C5, C6, C7. It is a long nerve and it supplies the serratus anterior muscle. The medial winging of the scapula is caused by paralysis of the serratus anterior muscle, which is supplied by the long thoracic nerve. In the medial winging of the scapula, the medial scapular border displaces itself from the thoracic cage, and it becomes more prominent during shoulder flexion. In the long thoracic nerve injury, the medial winging, the scapula elevates and the direction of the winging is medial. In the accessory nerve injury, lateral winging, the scapula depresses and the direction of the scapula is lateral. The medial winging is more common than the lateral winging. The medial winging of the scapula will be worsened by arm flexion. The lateral winging of the scapula will be worsened by arm abduction. In the lateral winging, there is usually a history of neck surgery, especially in the posterior triangle of the neck. Medial winging of the scapula can also be a part of the findings in a preganglionic or preclavicular brachial plexus injury. Medial winging of the scapula is checked by having the patient perform the wall push-up test for serratus anterior muscle weakness. Sobrascapular nerve, it supplies the sobraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles. The sobrascapular nerve arises from the upper trunk of the brachial plexus. The sobrascapular nerve passes under the transverse scapular ligament at the sobrascapular notch. Here you can see the transverse scapular ligament and you can see the artery runs above the ligament and the nerve runs below the ligament. The artery and the nerve join and then pass through the spinoglenoid notch under the inferior scapular ligament, as you can see here. The suprascapular nerve gives branches to the supraspinatus muscle and branches to the infraspinatus muscle. Nerve compression at the suprascapular notch affects both muscles, causing decrease in abduction of the shoulder and loss of external rotation of the shoulder with the arm to the side. Nerve compression at the spinoglenoid notch affects only the infraspinatus muscle, causing loss of external rotation of the shoulder. The spinoglenoid notch compression can occur in volleyball players and is usually associated with ganglion cysts or slab tears. The infraspinatus muscle is the primary external rotator of the shoulder. The latissimus dorsi muscle is the broadest muscle of the back, which is partially covered by the trapezius muscle as you can see here in this diagram. The latissimus dorsi is supplied by the cervical nerve roots of C6, C7, and C8 through the thoracodorsal nerve. The thoracodorsal nerve arises from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus between the upper and the lower subscapular nerves. The function of the latissimus dorsi muscle is tested by asking the patient 
to abduct the arm, then ask the patient to abduct the arm against resistance. The muscle belly of the latissimus dorsi muscle can be seen and felt. Now let's go to the subscapularis muscle. Subscapularis muscle is innervated by the upper and lower subscapular nerves, which arises from the posterior cord C5, C6, C7. The upper and lower subscapular nerves come from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. How do you test for the subscapularis muscle? You can do the left off test. If the patient is unable to lift the hand of the lower back, then the muscle is weak and a tear of the subscapularis tendon is suspected. Left off lag test is another test. The examiner will hold the patient hand away from the back of the lumbar region and let go. The patient will be unable to keep the hand away from the back if the tendon is torn. The belly press test. The patient presses the palm of the hand against the abdomen with the wrist in neutral position. This is an example of an intact subscapularis tendon. A positive sign for the belly press test occurs if the patient is unable to press his belly without wrist volar flexion or without the elbow falling posteriorly. The tears measure is supplied by the lower subscapular nerve. The upper and lower subscapular nerves come from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. How do you examine for the teres major muscle? The patient is adducting the elevated upper arm against resistance. You can see the muscle belly of the teres major and you can actually feel it. Above this muscle is the teres minor muscle and in between the two muscles, the teres major and the teres minor, you will find the quadrangular space that contains the axillary nerve and the posterior humeral circumflex artery. A vague pain posteriorly in this location may indicate entrapment of the axillary nerve in the quadrangular space. The triangular space will be more medial and the triangular interval is slightly distal as indicated in this diagram. The teres minor is a narrow muscle which originates from the posterior lateral surface of the scapula and it inserts into the greater tuberosity of the humerus. The teres minor is innervated by the posterior branch of the axillary nerve. Here you can see in this diagram the posterior branch of the axillary nerve supplying the teres minor. It is the same nerve that gives cutaneous innervation to the lateral part of the shoulder. The teres minor contributes to important anatomical spaces in the posterior part of the shoulder. The teres major contribute to three important anatomical spaces. The teres minor, the smaller muscle, contribute to only two important anatomical spaces. A good way to see the teres minor muscle is on the sagittal view of the MRI, as you can see here. The infraspinatus is the main external rotator of the shoulder with the arm to the side. The arm is adducted. The teres minor muscle is the main external rotator of the shoulder with the arm abducted. Clinical examination, the horn blower's test. The test is used to determine the strength of the teres minor muscle. 
The patient and the examiner are both standing and the patient's arm is elevated to 90 degrees. The patient's elbow is then flexed to 90 degrees and the patient is asked to laterally rotate the shoulder. Weakness and or pain against resistance signals a positive test.